wonderful, marvelous, magnificent, splendid, perfect, loved, loved, loving, lovable, healthy, wealthy. I am a grand being. I am. I. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's get into it. I'm Kenyatta. This will be a reading from the Dust to Onyx. The title of this reading is Quagmire. Okay, so I had a dream. Uh, and in a dream, I was in this church, okay, the church that I grew up in, a church my great grandfather founded. Okay. However, I was with my grandmother in the dream which was interesting because I used to go to church with her and it wasn't that church. But nevertheless, I was sitting next to her and I was in the choir. Okay. We had on gray robes with black, like the cuffs were lined black, the collar was lined black. We sang and sat down and I was even thinking like, why the hell am I in the choir? <laughs> Which I don't think I have shit to do with, with the dream. Nothing necessarily. Because I wasn't one to sing in a choir in church. I would try. Okay. But I just I just didn't like it. I liked, you know, being in. I don't. I hate to call it the audience. But I liked sitting in the congregation. Not being up in the choir stand. But anyway. Um, and I damn sure wouldn't sing in the choir at that church. Okay. My grandmother's church was much more. uh it was bigger, much, much bigger, okay, um, just more progressive, just, you know, it was just like the place to be, okay, on Sunday morning. The church that, uh, my great-grandfather's church, not at all, the little, small, little teen tiny church, okay, um, very, very old, okay, in more ways than one, and uh, I, I didn't like it there, okay, but that's where we were. But I was okay. I was. I had a, a attitude and spirit of being pleased because I, I was sitting next to my grandmother. Okay, and um, I felt like I knew I was safe because I was with her. The church was a little evil, little place. <laughs> okay, and it was some very nice people there. Don't misunderstand. All right, but anyway. After church, you know, people are, uh, you know, kind of congregating, standing around, talking to each other and whatnot. There was a woman, a tall woman. She had a short afro, tall, low on the thick side. And I never saw her face, but I had, I knew who she was. Okay. One of the members, you know, that I knew that went there. And then she doesn't look at all like I saw her in the dream, but it was her. And she was holding a baby, cutest little thing. And I remember I looked at the baby and the baby was just like dancing in her arms. But I thought it was strange because the baby was an infant. Okay. They can't even, you know, uh, like, like fresh, freshly born. Okay. Babies at that point, you know, aren't even able to hold up their head here. Hell, nowadays, these babies coming out doing all type of shit almost immediately. Like when I was born, my mom, a lady who raised me told me that, you know, uh, our eyes would be closed. These babies come out now, eyes wide open, you know. But anyway, um, but I thought it was so strange. Baby was smiling and laughing and dancing around, but you could tell it was just born. And it was weird because it was like some, when I looked at the baby and I thought to myself, that's strange. That baby was just, just got here. It's like the baby could hear my thoughts. And the baby looked at me and went back into the, you know, the quote unquote infant stage of what infants, you know, where they should be at. Okay, in terms of its physical self, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, stop dancing, in other words. Watch, smile wiped off his face. Okay, and 
someone was asking her about the baby and she said the baby's name was Quagmire. That she named the child Quagmire and I thought to myself, what in the hell? Who would name their, why the fuck would she name that child Quagmire? But then at the same time, it sounded so familiar to me. So we're going to find out what that's all about now. Of course, I looked up Quagmire. Okay. Webster's Dictionary here. Now, this is the Merriam-Webster's, okay? It's one of the modern ones. Okay, not the old, old dictionary with the real meanings. Copyright 2016. Quagmire. Um, well, shit, I was just looking at it. There it is. One, a soft, I mean, okay, one, as a noun, soft, miry land that yields under the foot. Okay, so you all know what that means. Two, it also says, for two, predicament. So let's see, what did this dream mean? Why this lady named this child Quagmire? What, what? I mean, what was the significance here? What was being said? Now I'm starting to feel like I may know as I'm talking about it, but we all do this reading and see. Okay. From the dust to onyx. Now, you may think, you may say, or you may not. You didn't feel safe there. You felt safe because you were with your grandmother. Now, this may not have nothing to do with this child's name being Quagmire, what this reading is all about, okay? Um, yeah, meaning that in that space, I didn't feel safe. Okay, I didn't. the mean hateful folks and energies in that building matter of fact a man uh, uh, from South Dakota came there one time oh this is my, my grandfather great grandfather died when I was one so he wasn't around with none of this stuff okay um, a bishop came to do a revival at the church one time and he was from South Dakota. And he was, uh, you know, prophet, prophet sound folks. It was a really good, really, really enjoyed him being there. He has since transitioned as well. But he said, now this is when I was much older. Okay, I was an adult in my 20s. He said, someone... I think he said something like it's some witches in this church or it's been some witches in this church. Someone has put, I don't know what the hell, you know, powder or some shit, what witch juju powder shit, I don't know what to call it, okay, around this church. Okay. Well, you know, folks got quiet. <laughs> Now, I was only in my 20s, and I was I probably was in there like, oh, my Lord. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Scared as shit, like, oh, no. But at the same time, something was like, I believe it. You know, I was kind of like, didn't want to believe anything negative about uh, that space, that church, because it's my great grandfather's church, regardless of what I saw, but I was young at the same time. I mean, I know I didn't like it there. I knew folks was mean as hell and evil as whatnot and, and, and whatnot. 
Okay, and probably some of them are watching. Some of them probably watching in agreement, like she right. Some of them probably watching, like thinking to themselves, bitch. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I do remember in the back of my mind, like deep within, thinking I believe it. Some evil folk in this motherfucker. All right. So no, it was not a place, a safe, a place to feel safe. So I'm sure some people out there um, have experienced things like that, you know, in the church. Now, my grandmother's church, I felt very safe. Okay. Very wanted, very loved. So my saying was a per perfect, that they didn't have no problems and issues. Every place does. Okay, where there are humans, it's going to be some shit. Okay. But they had a kind nature. Now, you know, what do they say? Out of the mouth of babes. So I remember one time, my daughter, she was just in her early talking phase. Maybe she, I don't know, maybe two, some shit, uh, three. Two, I don't remember. And I went there. She was. She usually wasn't with me on the weekends, but she was this particular weekend. She was usually with her father on the weekends. This, but, but this weekend she was with me. I had her in the back seat because I would go every now and then. And we pulled up in that parking lot, and this child said, "Oh, we come in here. We come into this church." And I said, "Yes." That child said, this is not a nice church. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Nothing I ever said to her. Somebody might have said it to her, but I don't think so. Children, no. And you know, they ain't gonna hold back shit. So 11 minutes in. All right, let's get into it. Here we have three of blades upright. The chef, chief, excuse me, up from I said it's chef, the chief, upright. Four blades, universe. Now, y'all know these cards are wide, so you know how they are with the screen. I don't use these that often. Uh, four blades in reverse. Ace of blades, upright. And here we have five of staffs in reverse now, I'm not even quite sure this thing uh, the quagmire shit has anything to do with the church in and of itself that's just my commentary shit about my experience some of my experience there alright uh, let's get into it okay um, I definitely see um, I always look at this card three of blades the way it is here okay sure okay but it looks like a target Okay, like maybe someone is targeted, being targeted here. And not for nothing good. Okay. For misery and heartbreak. I'm hearing they were targeted just for that. Now, this might have been um, this whoever was targeted here. It's like this person was made to feel excluded. Now, it may not be th this church and the people in this church, okay? This is my dream, okay? That my, ex my dream, my experience, okay? Where, you know, my life, okay? So the ch that particular church could have been used in the dream for a variety of reasons, for, you know, for a number of reasons. One thing that's coming to my mind is the possibility because, because the church was so small, okay, it had, it was one of those churches because it was so small, it had that kind of family type of feel. Everybody kind of knew everybody. Everybody didn't know everybody. You have families of people in that church who have been in that church for generations. Some, I think probably since my great grandfather had started church. It's an old, old, old church. First, of that denomination in the state of Ohio. Okay, that's how old it is. So you had generations of families in that church. A family, they, they, uh, mama went there and their mama's mama and their mama, 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 and that type of thing. 
Okay. Uh, a lot of people related, okay, into marrying one another, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So I feel like that is just represented, representing here um, this individual here, this quagmire thing or whatever. I'm not saying it's the, this baby, okay, because it wasn't a baby I've known, never seen before. Okay. Um, but it's representing. Um, uh, this whoever this targeted uh, person is being left out, being made to feel like they could not be included, okay. And when it's a small community, you know, a big big old place, you can hide, okay. Uh, not but not when it's very small. Everybody everybody knows, and uh, again, I feel like this person was targeted made to feel alone lonely okay i'm here unalive but not like that physically okay like that they that their energy here was not wanted made to feel like they were i'm here again cast out but like no one nobody now there was somebody here there's somebody here who's in charge of that okay uh there's a leader to put that, uh, uh, who wants this person to feel this way. Somebody put others, somebody was in charge of putting others uh, in the, you know, in that space to do this to this uh, individual here. They were made, I'm here to feel sad and lonely, not wanted, unappreciated, not loved. Okay. This person who uh, put others in charge is, is a nasty motherfucker here. Okay. Just a bitch. Hateful. Mean. And I feel like, um, hold on. I don't know if people are afraid of this person. Almost like bow down to this person, whatever you say, okay? Worship this person. I don't know. Okay. Let me see. I'm hearing about something about they were uncomfortable. So maybe they were scared of this person. I'm hearing very. All right, so I'm going to get out the uh, vape, make them, make them here the book. Help me out a little bit. Mm. <laughs> okay. This person here, once again, they wanted this person to, uh, again, feel uh, like cast out. Okay, this person probably withdrew themselves. You know, maybe isolated. Well, they were isolated. Okay, so withdrew themselves. And it's interesting here because this book says exile. And it's from this picture, it's almost like this person. It's almost like this person here uh, is in some kind of prison, like they were banished. When you look at it, the way it looks, I showed the picture. But I feel as though this person here uh, was awakened to or found something that would work for them. This shit ain't going to work here. You know, um, they done did me this way. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? 
Uh, I'm I, like I said that feeling uncomfortable. Okay, and like I said, I don't know. I didn't know if the people here that were uncomfortable or the person that was targeted. I'm hearing both. Okay. So they said, you know, I feel like, fuck it, you know, I'll find something new, something that works for me. Which I feel was like they didn't expect. The person who was in charge of this bullshit, as well as the people who were um, doing the devil's handiwork here. Okay. The hard-hearted person's handiwork. They were what they were expecting and wanting here was this person to be in a lot of conflict to continue to just stay amongst the bullshit and feel oppressed. They wanted them to struggle, they wanted to be them to be in a place of strife, but that's not what happened. So the targeted person said, Fuck it, I'm moving on. Six of gourds in reverse, six of staffs in reverse. Two of blades in reverse, okay? And we have ace of coins upright. <clears throat> okay. This person realized wasn't gonna be no happy memories here for them. They probably didn't ha don't have any happy memories. Okay, I wasn't going to try to make no happy memories. Like I said, uh, fuck it, I'm moving on. Wasn't going to be victorious in this place. And it was not some kind of hard thing for them to try to figure out what should I do? Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay in this place? Let these motherfuckers target me, you know, fight and be in str uh, strife and struggle and all of this type of shit. Or find something new for them that's going to work for me. Hell, this says that we wouldn't find something that was going to work for them. They're not dumb. Okay, this person is not dumb. It ain't going to work. Fuck it. Moving on, guys. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so I feel like whatever, whatever they did, whatever they did that was new for them, that they found something new for them that would work, it grounded them. It gave them a place that a, some head boom. Here it is. I'm hearing a solid foundation. When we're talking about quagmire, something, you know, ground that yields underfoot. That is not a solid foundation. This person went and found them a got them a solid foundation for where they were able to plant a seed that was going to manifest to success for them. Okay. And a place where they would find some favor. All right. Not be, you know, targeted here. Okay. Here we have the moon in reverse. Three of coins, upright. Okay. And here we have two of coins in reverse. I feel like, um, hmm. let me see. Of course, the moon here. In reverse, let me see, let me see, let me see. Mm hmm Hmm. See, right up under the boss here. This moon here in reverse. They wanted this person to be in a state of fear. Okay. Confusion. Again, turmoil. Deception. But once again, hell no. <laughs> now, they may not have even known that this person was behind this. But they, was, they led the brigade on targeting them. They might not have known that or realized that, okay, that anybody was. Just, they don't like me here. They don't like me in this space, okay? So let me get the hell on. Okay. Moving the fuck on, okay? Well, it would be stupid to sit up there and be someplace where you are, you know, 
If you can leave, you know you can leave while sit up there and allow your people to abuse you and target you. It's like, you know, fuck you. And undoubtedly, that I mean, it's torturous going into a place like that. Okay. So once again, this person went and, and did their due diligence and found a place, okay, that would work for them with others, people of like minds. Okay. All right. Oh, shit. One more. So they wouldn't basically be somewhere uh, living in, being in a space that was made, that, that for one was unbalanced. So that they would continue, you know, so that they would be in the same state of mind as the rest of the folks who, who were targeting them. Unbalanced. Ain't going to be somewhere where they're going to be overwhelmed and dealing with people that are uh you know, it, here it says opposition that were opposing them all the time. Okay. And mistreating them. Not even trying to get to know them or befriend them. But of course, these people were given a job to do. Judgment here in reverse. Young Gord in reverse. Okay. And here we have the universe. In reverse. Right. Now, I could simply say it wasn't going to sit there and let somebody judge them. Okay. Uh, interesting. Church. What would I hear all the time? Those of us who grew up in church, you know, what would they say? Ain't nobody got no heaven or hell to put you in. <laughs> okay. To judge you and determine uh, you know, what life you going to live and where you going to go. Heaven or hell to put you in, whether you believe that literally or in your mind, okay? Allowing people, this person here, not allowing people to target them constantly to the point where they, you know, talking about them and God knows what else, mistreating them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, saying evil, nasty things to them, about them, behind their back, and, you know, making them feel funny every time they walk in the door and all this type of thing, so that they would eventually do it to themselves, saying, you know, well, what the hell is wrong with me? What did I do? Why am I being treated this way? And people who, like we said here, wouldn't even, well, somewhere in here, wouldn't even get take the time to get to know the person, no, because they had a job to do, which was to target the person, okay? But the, I don't feel like this person knew that, again, that they were charged with this. They ain't have, you stupid to do it anyway. Because okay. what you do to others is going to be done to you eventually. All right. So I feel like simply, you know. You know what I mean? The, the person may have felt like you don't even know me, yet you are going to judge me and mistreat me, et cetera, et cetera. I feel like, hell no, I'm not going to allow, uh, you know, myself to stay in that kind of a space. Okay. Okay. This person, I feel like, was not um, immature uh, by... by now, I don't want to say immature by staying, but immature by whatever this uh, person who was leading this charge here wanted them to do to become, you know, volatile and fighting and all of that kind of stuff with the rest of the crew that they were sending after them. Okay. This person did not do that. See, the plan looked like it backfired on this person. Okay. They said, hell no. Okay. All right. Um, and I feel like they wanted to just put them in some kind of dark space to turn them into something that they weren't. A ruthless motherfucker, okay? Insincere, okay? Fickle, volatile, immature, okay? Again, this person said no. Probably didn't even realize what they were saying no to. I, I mean, that they were saying no to, that, that this, see, this, all this shit was planned out. All right. 
Um, hold on, please. Let me see. I feel like what had been started on this person is complete in them. But the can now is open, okay, on those who did the that work to this person. What they had set out to do to this person, target this person, okay, um, is now being done to them. I'm hearing for you it is complete. They will no longer target you. They will no longer come after you. They will no longer bother you. Now, I'm not saying that they ain't going to do the same most uh, habitual uh, robotic bullshit they've always done. <laughs> okay. But it is like, you know, when they talk about the, uh, the ascension, ascending, folks ascending. Well, what about, I mean, my dad used to tell me about this shit when I was 12 years old. Okay. The ascension and all of this type of thing. And I would ask him, Dad, what you you know what you mean, blah blah blah, this that and other. And he would explain to me what the ascension. Well, I might have been a little bit older than twelve, shit. But he's always been talking this kind of spiritual talk ever since I can remember. Okay, things that have been made you know public and thrown on the world wide web. Now they didn't have that shit back then. Okay, you probably had small groups of communities. Okay, because my dad was in a spiritual group. It was a very small group. Okay, uh, back then. Okay, most folks were still going to church and doing the religious thing. Okay, at that time. But he would tell me these things, okay, and, and I would add, but he knew I was churchified, all right. But he would ex try to explain these things to me when I would ask him. And I, and I remember one time we were having a conversation about the, the ascension. And he would always talk about the ascension, the ascension, and the 3D, and the 5D, and everything. And I asked my dad, I said, what, what do the ascension mean? I might have said this in a video before. What, what does that mean? So he explained it to me. I said, well, it sounds like the rapture. He said, I guess you could look at it that way. And I said, well, where are people going to go? Because I knew my dad was not a Christian. So I knew his thinking was not Christian or his teaching was not Christian and what he was trying to explain to me. So he wasn't talking about going up, being raised up, physically raised up, going to no heaven in the by and by with the streets of gold and the land of milk and honey. And he explained to me that it was more of a, you know, a spiritual process, you know, in your mind, your spirit, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, well, well, you basically saying everybody going to still be here. He was like, yeah. <laughs> My dad was so cool the way he was, okay? And I said, I said well, everybody ain't going to ascend, are they? He was like, no, everybody ain't going to ascend. I said, well, everybody going to be still here in the same space? The people were sending the people. Didn't he say, yeah. And I said, well, you know, how's that going to be? You know, because I was still in the, the, the Christian process of thinking, okay? But this is what I am saying to you. You have ascended whoever you are, whoever this is resonated with, resonating with, you have ascended beyond this bullshit. So if you encounter these folks again, they probably will still do the same thing, go in their corners, whispering, whatnot, because you, their God, okay, has walked through the fucking door because this is how they treat you, okay, like you God, like you're their God. They worship you. They don't realize they're doing that. But that's what they're doing, as well as this person who was targeting you. They put you on some kind of fucking pedestal. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking, people put you on a pedestal, don't treat you like that. Think about it. Change your perception. Open your thinking. If they constantly, uh, tar you know, got their mind on you to target you and all of that type of thing, every time you walk through the door and you they see your ass, okay, they lose themselves and go in the corner and there they go, there they go, and all of this kind of stuff. There's some kind of worship and praise may be misdirected okay but nevertheless okay so if it were to take place it's like like i said in one video you're not even y'all breathing two different two y'all ain't even breathing the same air you're in a whole different realm in a whole different space in time they're stuck in the same space in time in the muck and the miry there it is quagmire they're still like infants. Want to be more. The baby was bouncing around laughing, wanting to be beyond what it actually was. Wanting to be at, at, at a place of development where it actually was not. But you caught it. It's like I saw it. I was like, wait a minute. You're just an infant. You're supposed to be doing that shit. <laughs> 
They're not truly there. They now they may act like it. They may try to say the the right words. Okay, to sound like something that they're not. They are still stuck in that muck, in that mire. No foundation, no strong foundation, none. Okay, what is that scripture? Um, I'm thinking about the one where they're talking about carried away with every wind and doctrine, but I can't think of it right now. Okay, but nevertheless. Okay, stuck. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, um, I think this is it. Jesus is speaking. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. You went and left this miry shit. And built something for yourself, a solid foundation for yourself, something that was going to work for you, knowing who you were, knowing what you needed, what you wanted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Knowing yourself, know thyself, the rock, solid foundation. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Okay, here is where these energies sit. Okay, you've moved on past this shit. They are in the midst of it. What they have done to you is now being done to them. And it possibly will be done to their seed. Okay, now I wonder for this person who led the brigade here. What of them? I'm hearing nothing, not a damn thing. Okay, nothing to even worry or concern yourself about. Okay, when it's nothing, it's just nothing. Okay, that's it.